sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it rumbles the ground. I mean, the ground's like shaking. When it's just idling, it's like a constant, like someone's whistling. Yeah, it does sound like, an, like a jet, doesn't it? Yeah, when you're revving it up, it sounds like a jet's gonna take off. <laughs> yeah, I can see why you're excited it, when you're loud noises. Doesn't it sound better than the last one though? Yeah, it does actually. Well, I don't know about better, just louder. Awesome. Sounds I'm happy. better than my truck. Well, my, yeah, well, your your truck doesn't even start yet. My uh, turbo only sounds good when it's uh... Well, she has this one, the RDS S480. This is going to be a nice one right here. I'm excited to hear this thing spool up, especially with the 68 in the valley. You guys are not going to want to miss the end of this video, so definitely check it out. I'm going to go ahead and take this Duramax on a rip. Okay, so it's been a couple days now since I installed the RDS 64 millimeter nine blade turbo that everybody's been requesting me to do a video on, which I did. If you guys missed out on that awesome video, definitely check it out. It's the last video that I posted. And of course, everybody's ranting and raving about this nine blade turbo because it sounds different, but more importantly, it actually increases horsepower and acceleration. Like I said, this has been two days now that I've had this truck with a new turbo in it and I've been driving it around. I'm gonna give you guys my first impression because that last video was just an install and a startup. So before I had a 68 millimeter 10 blade RDS turbo, I've been running this setup for about three years now and needless to say, I'm hooked on the sound. It sounds amazing. Drivability, everything other than just pulling trailers, it's not the best because it's a 68 mil. But if you guys don't know the difference between the nine blade and the 10 blade, the new RDS turbo has nine blades on the turbine side of the turbo. And of course the older setup that I had had 10 blades. I would expect a little bit more flow on the nine blade as well as the sound. It's gonna sound definitely different. So check this out. This is what you guys have been waiting for. Here are the before and after clips of what it sounds like. And then I want you guys to let me know in the comments the comparison. What do you guys think? What sounds the best? One thing about this video, Video is not all setups are gonna sound identical because this 2007 LBZ Duramax that I have has a five inch straight exhaust all the way to the back and it's axle dump. So there's basically a pipe that goes right over the axle and it reverberates right off the ground. So it's definitely gonna sound a lot different. For example, if you had a side exit, a stack, or just a simple muffler setup where it just exits right out the back of the truck. But my setup isn't ideal for a daily driver because it may actually drive you nuts. But me personally, it doesn't bother me at all. It just sounds like bald eagles and freedom right out that exhaust pipe. Before I get into the before and after clips, watch till the very end of the video. Trust me, it'll be worth it because Ryan's going to explain what most guys should consider with their diesel when it comes to fueling and turbo sizes. I'm getting this question all the time as well. If I install a 64 plus millimeter turbo on my diesel, do I need to tune it? But if you guys are gonna increase the size of the millimeter of that turbine, yes, you will most definitely need to tune that truck. These Ryan's diesel service turbos have been a huge help to my build lately. If you guys are interested in upgrading your stock setup, or if you just wanna to upgrade to something different that you already have in there, definitely check them out. I'll leave that link in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the sound comparison, the battle. Which sounds the best? Let me know.
My overall opinion on both setups, I again say that after driving the Duramax for a couple days now, I'm gonna tell you that the acceleration is definitely better and the whistle sounds better. I wish I'd have done it sooner. You guys in the comments were talking me into doing it and I'm so glad I did it. It's actually more responsive than the 68 because when you initially drive the truck, it accelerates quicker because it's a smaller turbo. So now that I have all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and show you guys the scan tool that I'll be using. I already relearned the turbo, but a lot of you guys were asking me how I actually performed the relearn process on a turbo. I'll show you guys really quick what scan tool I'm using and how I'm actually checking that and after that I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys on another test drive so let's go ahead and show you guys the relearn process on the turbo so this is the scan tool that I'll be using it's made by X tool it's a d8 as a matter of fact I'll leave a link in the description if you guys are interested in checking this out it's not a Matco or a snap-on this is a pretty nice unit it does what I need it to for the garage that I have for example special functions and, and of course relearning things such as injectors turbos DPFs and I'll show you guys that here in a second but this is how I usually relearn my turbos. Just go to special functions. But what you're looking for is VGT relearn. That's exactly how you guys do it. So you will actually have to have a special tool for this. You can't just relearn the turbo without a scan tool is where I'm getting at. But it does pick up auto scan, so just plug it in, hit auto scan, and it'll actually identify your vehicle off the bat. And then after that, I'll show you guys what the desired is and where it's at currently. Once it's been detected, just click system diagnose. And then you're gonna have your turbo vane position control solenoid that you can actually turn on, which is pretty sweet. Basically just hit the on button. And then it also shows live data, but this is what you guys wanna see. Vane position sensor. And to point this out, vane position sensor is at 51% and desired is at 51% as well. But scan tools like this are very beneficial because when you're doing this, you can also check for injector balance rates, for example. Click on live data, engine two, or engine data two, should I say. And this right here will show you guys your injector balance rates. And you can even click on them just to, you know, actually subtract everything that you don't want to look at. And then just hit custom. Pretty simple. And it'll show you guys your injector balance rates. As you guys can tell, I have a 4 right here, which isn't horrible. If you're out of the spectrum of plus 4 or negative 4, that injector definitely needs some attention. So maybe some fuel injector cleaner is what I need to run through this truck. I'm not gonna beat the dead horse on scan tools, but they are very practical if you guys do a lot of stuff in your garage. And also if I install brand new injectors, this has the ability to recode them. Because if you put brand new injectors in here and you don't recode everything and sync all the injectors correctly, it will not be reading correct values and your engine's not gonna run where it needs to be. So that's enough with that. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in the X tool. They retail for about 700 bucks. If you guys are interested in seeing me do a zero to 60 test with the new nine blade, I have not done that yet. I will do that for you guys. I'm curious to see what it's like zero to 60. We'll do a zero to 60 test. Years ago, I did a video with the 10 blade RDS turbo and I did a zero to 60 on the road. I think I got like five seconds, I can't remember, but this truck still rips. But I'm curious to see if I can hit zero to 60 even quicker in this OBZ with the nine blade turbo. But it's very simple. If we can get this video to 3000 likes, I will absolutely do a video for you. Usually these videos get between 20 to 50,000 views. I may break my truck, but hit the like button for me and let's see if we can get this thing up to 3000 likes. All right guys, here's a little in cab noise. Um, engine light's actually a glow plug I gotta replace, so don't worry about the engine light. I'll take care of that soon. But we'll go ahead and get her boosted up just a little bit. We're not gonna do a zero to 60 or anything, but just a good idea of what the acceleration's like with 35s. Woo! I am roasting them! Dude! Okay, all right, all right, all right, I'll slow down. <laughs> This truck is way faster, guys. I couldn't keep the I couldn't keep traction. It was in two-wheel drive. I could not keep traction. That was insane. Way faster than the 68. I don't care what anyone says. Man! Wow! Alright, let's go ahead and get it back to the shop. We are done. But the turbo lit so quickly, 0 to 60 would be nothing in this giant pickup. That's insane! Here's just like a little surge noise from the turbo. Sounds pretty good. I know it's not always the best thing, but... <laughs> it's awesome. This turbo's a lot of fun.
My favorite truck out of the fleet, by the way. And I am absolutely shocked that I was able to roast the tires that quickly before it wasn't able to do that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the explanation that Ryan's gonna give to you guys about turbo sizings and feeling and stuff like that. I think it's pretty insightful. Hey guys, Ryan from Ryan's Diesel Service here, talking about turbos and that sort of thing. Over the last uh, couple months, I'd say we've seen an increase in phone calls coming in, uh, talking with the guys here. Um, people asking, what size turbo should I go with? So a couple things, just briefly touch on that. Most common turbo size that we see is a 64 mil that guys are going with. Uh, 64 mil is very good all around turbo, daily driver, tow rig, that sort of thing. Most popular sizing for horsepower that you're gonna get out of a 64 mil is about 650 rear wheel horsepower. Injector size should be a 30 or 45 over. Pump, you could either be, you know, stick with your stock pump and be a little bit limited on that, or end up going with like a Sportsman CP3. Um, with a Sportsman, 45s and a 64, all the way across the board in the 64 size, that's generally about a 650 horsepower truck. Next size up, 66 mil. 66 mil, a lot of guys will be paired with either a 10 mil pump or be, you know, maxing out a sportsman um, and about a 60 over injector. That setup there is pretty good for about a 700 horsepower truck. Then moving up again, your 68 mil. 68 mil, bare minimum 60 over injectors. We like to see hundreds with that. Injection pump size should be a 10 mil. Um, if you're towing with that truck, you should not be running a 68 mil. We've been getting a lot of guys that have been running our big 68, not the one that Josh was running, but our bigger 68 with the 71 turbine that are trying to run these on stock fueling. Your tuners are then calling us going, A, why does this customer have this? Because it doesn't spool. We can't get this to spool correctly because of the size and the modifications that are done. And or B, they have to start manipulating tuning so much that generally it overspeeds the turbo and it blows it up. Um, so some guys like to disagree with me on that, but that's just the reality. Um, there's been many tuners that are way smarter than me out there that make their living and have done this for many, many years. And that is the common denominator that everybody says is, those are your options when you have a 68 mil, that's what's gonna end up happening. Our next size up and our last size that we offer then is a 72 millimeter. 72 millimeter, that's gonna be good for pretty much you're tapping on about a thousand horsepower. Um, that is a straight competition turbo. That should be about 150 over injector, bare minimum at that point. Um, and at least some sort of dual fueler setup or a 14 mil single pump. Keep a watch out. It's uh, probably gonna be something we may do with Josh on his channel or we may do it over on our YouTube channel. We're gonna talk about the differences between our aftermarket unit and an OE unit. Uh, we're gonna show some differences. We made one of these videos a while back, but it's one of those things we like to go and kind of keep things fresh. We're gonna show you the nitty gritty down and dirty. Um, we've really gone over the last several weeks, um, we've actually gone and taken these, some units and compared them uh, through very extensive testing and that sort of thing. We're gonna show you guys all the numbers, everything down, what we're seeing on our end, and what you guys can expect to uh, get from us as far as our product when you're buying it. So keep an eye out for that as well too. But I'm very serious about that zero to 60 test. Let me know. I'm worried actually that if I do it, I'm going to break something. But if I do, I guess I'll have the camera on for you guys. And of course, stay tuned for the Wife Max. We're going to go ahead and finish this up and you guys are going to love it. Just stay tuned for this one. Before you guys head out, check out my website, truckmasterdiesel.com. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned. Thank <laughs> you.